My friends call me Chucky. You're dead. No, you are. Did you see the steam when I sliced open his guts? I've never felt so alive! Yeah, well, you've been alive for like two minutes. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to YCFT. It's been a hot minute since we've talked about Chucky, our guy, Chucky. Unlike our Friday the 13th video series, which we took us far too long to do all three, we are we're finishing this one. The last two films to date in the Child's Play, really referred as the Child's Play or the Chucky franchise. I kind of oscillate between the two. Yeah, it's not been Child's Play for a while. No, I think I gravitate more towards saying Chucky. Like yeah. The Chucky films, the Chucky oh, franchise. Been the Chucky films since Bride of Chucky. Yeah. This film, or these two films, are the first ones to go direct to DVD, straight to home video, yeah. which is usually a death sentence for especially horror movies. Yeah. But Chucky somehow survived. I always say that when the first one this came out, of these two came out, The Curse of Chucky, mm. in 2013, it was just before the streaming boom. Yes. I can't, even though this, this did very well and well enough to get a sequel mm -hmm. in 2017, Cult of Chucky. Mm -hmm. which we're going to talk about both of these. And the story that's laid out in these two films very heavily continued and affected the setup for the currently running TV series. Yeah. So they are very important. And Chucky just keeps, he just keeps going. He does. This one continuous story. We had that bullshit. one hiccup of a remake. But what's interesting is that in 2007, Don Mancini, the the original writer he also directed both of these mm. he also he directed seed he did as well obviously it's been a while so what the hell was seed again it's 2004 four so at this point it had been a while since we'd had a tricky film yes he initially conceptualized this as a remake of a the reboot, original because he'd been dying to redesign the chucky doll for, yeah he, he wanted to make it like more uncanny modern valley. more uncanny, uncanny valley where dolls were are kind of today or like they were 10 years ago yeah just more yeah. lifelike and more essentially creepy mm. so Chucky does look a little bit different in this and that seems to split fans I personally don't mind it I also don't mind it but, but... reactions that did mean that for cult state you went back to the <laughs> yeah side. but the reason he didn't go with a full-on remake is because of the reactions to the likes of like Nightmare on Elm Street yes. remake really were not doing very well so he changed it to be more Curse is more of a soft reboot in which the, mm. the events of all the previous films have happened. Yes, continuing the story. But it's just a different story within that world. And it's very much a return to horror. Yes. And, yeah, this, this Curse of Chucky is a gothic horror. Oh, yeah. And looks way better than it has any right to being a straight-to-DVD film. It really does, yeah. Production value is high. Production value is very high. And we are introduced to Nika Pierce, played by Fiona Dorff, the voice of Chucky... Brad Dorf's daughter. Yeah. Who's obviously grown up around Keeping Chucky her in entire the life. In fact, she still had to audition for it. Yeah. So this... Like you can't just hand out roles to people you want. She still had to audition. Yeah. I know it's like, as soon as you hear that Dorf's daughter is, you know, like the new lead, um, you think, ah, oh, nepotism. Hello, old friend in the film industry. But no, apparently she, even though she obviously knew Mancini, Mancini and Brad Dorf were good friends, um, they still went through the whole, you know, like official process she she did have to audition i think she had to audition a few times but mancini just said it was kind of like a a no-brainer you know she had yeah. the laugh she had that manic energy she had you know the the bonus she was always already very familiar with the with the franchise so it just kind of works and i think mancini has always talked about you know like keeping things in the family is quite important to him like he's stuck with child's play since the very beginning he works with this, you know tony gardner the special effects guy he's always been there since the very beginning like yeah i think it's it's quite it, it worked for mancini that there was another familiar face yeah now in in the family for the first time well brad drew himself it was the first time he's ever been to set and seen the chucky dolls because he yeah. he says usually the process of making chucky for him is usually quite a lonely one yeah it's just him in a sound booth. He records all his dialogue. And he records all of it beforehand so that they can program it into the dolls. Yeah. But so this time, because his daughter was on set, he just came along and spent a few days on set. So you got to see the Chucky dolls in action, which yeah. is like, you also got to play a live action Charles Lee Ray again. He did. Because this film yeah. has flashbacks to just before the events of the original film. Yes. Which is really interesting. They're black and white, but there's a, a theme of like sunflowers 
yeah. in this film. And so everything's black and white apart from the sunflowers, which I really like. But obviously he's got he's heavily coated in makeup and prosthetics to try and like hide the fact yeah. that he's you can tell you know, it's, it's like, an old guy. It's very yeah. much, you know, Tobin Bell and yeah, Saw X. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair, they made more of an effort to hide it than Saw X did. They did, they did. There's no backwards cap though. <laughs> no, not yet. It's, it's no backwards cap. But it was cool to see him return return to the role. Oh, absolutely. What well, you know, so, love Brad Dourif. Nika, Fiona, play she plays a paraplegic. Yes. She is in a she is in a wheelchair, she has been her entire life. She is in this house with her, with her mother who is a bit mentally unwell. Reclusive. Reclusive. Yeah, very protective over Nika. Yes. Well. And they receive a mystery package of a good guy doll. Yeah. This retro doll from the eighties. Yeah. No idea who sent it. Nika's mum is quite quickly... Perturbed. Pert- perturbed. Ooh, that's a good word. Mm. Yeah, she sees take, take out the equation pretty quickly. And then yes. that invites Nika's sister, her partner, daughter Alice, and their housekeeper, and a priest. Suddenly the house is full of people. It's full of people, because they think the mum has committed suicide. Yeah, and people then start to die. One by one. One by one. It's back to being a traditional slasher film again. It is, it is. And also we as the audience know that Chucky's alive and it's about 44 minutes into the film before Chucky even says a line of dialogue. Yeah. Chucky, I'm scared. You fucking should be. Yeah. And I really like that return to form and I do. Seeing him lurk around like we see we see him move before we see him speak so we see him like poisoning some uh What's the meal that they're having? I can't remember. Well, it looks like some kind of a bolognese chili. meal, but I think it's revealed it's a chili. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it so put, puts rat poison in one of them. Doesn't yeah, it? and it's a great shot then because we're waiting to see who's going to get ill from it. Oh, it's it's br- like you get a bird's eye view of the you know the the table. It's a circular table, and um, we have no idea which who which dish is the rat poison in, and it's uh, oh, it goes on for so long. It does. <laughs> yeah, we such a great scene. And one thing I really like. There's almost a soap opera element to it. Yes, because the is. Sis, like the two sisters. What's what's Nika's sister called? Bob. Bob. That and it's the uh, the scary mother from the Insidious. It is. Two. Yeah. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. And she's a great actress. I <laughs> yeah, love her in this. She's like just despicable in this. She's, she's just a she's bitch. A bitch. Absolutely. She bitch. wants to sell the the house because they yes. they obviously they own this house together now. Because uh, she's like, oh, you know, money's tight, and Nika's like, you literally you have a nanny. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, things aren't really working out there. <laughs> yeah, and the whole yeah. time you're assuming that the uh, the husband is kind of having an affair with the nanny, but we are going to spoil this, by the way. The shit out of this. But I think movie. we have to be able to talk about how oh, yeah, these films relate yeah. to Definitely. the TV series. But no, Bob is sleeping with... The nanny. With the nanny. Jill. Jill. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is, a, this is a, a female mannequin, so I always say this is... Jill. Jill Scream 4. Jill from Scream 4. It's a lady ghost face. Yeah, I but wasn't yeah. going to call her Amber. But, <laughs> Bob, Bob and Jill are, uh, yeah. yeah. Then the husband puts a, puts a camera inside the Chucky doll. Because he suspects it's something. It's a soap like... opera. Oh. And I love it. Of course it is. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. No, it is a, it is a gothic soap opera, this. And it's uh, obviously the backdrop of the house as well. It's this old creepy mansion. They filmed this in Canada. Um and I guess they filmed it maybe in winter or something like that because we've got we've got you know dark rainy nights and storms I think as well and even just the interior of the house like it's quite derelict. Nika and her mom obviously like they've not had the time or the inclination to you know make it cozy and make it homey. So it's very uh, yeah just very gothic, very kind of haunted mansion vibes and we got this really stunning old uh, lift in the middle of the house obviously for Nika so she can navigate the house. Um, but it's one of those really old fashioned ones, you know, you've got to like pull the, the door across the iron yeah. door and that obviously they, they make great use of that later on in the movie. Well it's actually yeah. a callback to the lift from it is, the first the There's apartment. loads of callbacks to the to the original movie in this as well. Because technically you can kind of see this as a fir- a, a new first movie. You can like you could jump in at this film. But there, it doesn't ignore the other ones. Like as as soon as things start happening and the start Nika starts getting suspicious of the doll. She starts researching the good guy dolls, and obviously they have a legacy yes. at this point. Yeah, so she's kind of so she kind of finds out about together. Andy and stuff like that, and the yeah. doll starts to like go missing. And yeah, it's, I love that whole thing like with Alice, who it's like the problem we had with previous films, where when the child's almost too like in particular Child's Play Three, when the child seems too old to not be scared by a talking doll, or like 
or to be fooled by a talking doll. Yeah. Alice, I I could be completely wrong, but am I right in saying that young girls tend to play with dolls to a bit of an older age than men yeah, do? Yeah, I, 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 I guess so. I mean, I, I always played with dolls. Yeah. But I can't it's, remember the age I stopped, but yeah. I just, I just feel like Alice is a more appropriate target well, for I think Chucky. It also has to be said, I think I'm right in saying this, that prior to Alice, all ch- child characters interacting with Chucky have been boys. Yeah. We, it was Andy and it was the kid in Child's Play 3. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember his name. But yeah, this is the first time we've seen a little girl yeah, and interacting it just, with the doll. And it she just instantly to me, it just falls in love with him. Because right, Nika gifts it to Alice, obviously yeah. this doll that had just arrived. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mysteriously, and she doesn't know who sent it. Yeah. So should we go into like the backstory of Charles with this family? Of Chucky with this yes. family? Because that's it's important. The interesting part of it. So it's established that he knew this family. Yes. Not long before he dies. And that he actually potentially killed their father. There's a deleted uh, scene. Heavily implied. There's a deleted scene which also heavily implies that he might have killed Nika and Bob's father. Yes. But he also re- kidnaps their mother. He's I think obs- called Sarah. Sarah, who he's obsessed with. He's obs- he's absolutely obsessed with. I don't think Tiffany knows this. No, there's a. Um, I know we're, we're hiding Tiffany away here, but this isn't Tiffany's movie. It's which not we Tiffany's to show movie. Off <laughs> Chuck, this incredible drawing that you did. It had to be shown off. It was finished for our last video, but we forgot. We just totally forgot we to totally include forgot it for to Pride and Chucky. So he kidnaps Sarah, and he's got a tie That's when he gets these great black and white scenes, surrounded by sunflowers because they're her favorite flower. Yeah, she's also- and when we see it at the beginning of the movie, she's. Uh, She's painting them, and it's when you realise, like, oh, she's actually just painting from a very traumatic event that happened yeah, to her. Yeah, she's also, when she's kidnapped by Charles Lee Ray, she's also very heavily pregnant. Yes. She, it's heavily pregnant, she called the, the police on him. Yes. And obviously, it must have been before she was kidnapped, obviously, suspicious of something. And this is what leads to the chase, which leads to him getting the, shot at the, the beginning of the first movie. Yeah, he's so on the run. And he's, you actually see him as a person holding the knife in that photo, which is a knife that Chucky has in the first Mm. film so it's obviously it must be his knife mm. but he stabs her when she's pregnant and that is why Nika can't walk he's so enraged that she betrayed him like this that you, until this point she's kind of been going along with the charade that she wants to be with him and that you know they're going to be a family which is something that Charles Lee Ray is very vocal about something he wants you know like he wants to be part of the baby's life and he's going to take care of Sarah he's going to take care of the little girl and when he finds out that she's called the cops on him Thankfully, we don't actually see it, but yeah, he stabs the belly, which yeah. leads, unfortunately, to Nika being born pa- as a as a paraplegic. She's never had use of her legs yeah. because of that. Usually, I don't like it when films interfere with the first one, but this I, I feel like it works really well. And I like that this, even though he dispatches of Sarah pretty quickly, quickly. it's basically just a revenge story, which is different for Chucky. Yes. He's not... I think you pointed this out. It's quite unique at this point because he's not just going after someone to stash his soul. No, that, that's just Or trying to become human again. He's there for revenge. And after, he's not just going after Sarah. He wants revenge on the whole yeah, family. Even though they have nothing to do with what happened to him. He's just... Oh, it's just revenge. Pure and simple. He's just nuts. He's just... Yeah. Chucky. It was the first, I've seen this movie twice and I, I kind of forgotten the first time we watched it. But so the second time was almost like watching it for the very first time, and I really loved it. But it did strike me that this is literally the first film, and I can't, I don't even know, like what the seventh film in the franchise at this point, maybe. So one, two, three, Bride, Seed, sixth, the sixth, sixth film, six movies in the very first time where Chucky's endgame is to not possess someone. He's literally just there taking out this family one by one out of revenge. Like he's he's tracked them down. Presumably, and we also learn how the doll was sent to the the family. Yeah, to... we'll get to that in a little bit. Yes, I but looked... I do. I sorry, I just really, really like that. It's um, it's simple, but it's also something different, and I think it was needed. Yeah, you know, like I, there's only so many times you can see Chucky trying and failing to possess a person. You know, it's like actually, it's quite it's quite different and quite cool just to see him pretending to be the doll. And just taking out this family in diff- in different ways, and he really yeah. does. I read the element of once we realize the nanny cam is stashed in him, the Chucky POV. Yeah, which right. I feel like is obviously a homage to Halloween. Yeah, there's a couple of homages to Psycho as well throughout it, like lots like knife, knife, like knife and lightning. Yeah, black and, and white, uh, like, Nika in the wheelchair and. Yeah, there's. Yeah, it's just a really good. This is like a, a top three film for me with the Chucky franchise. Like it's up there with uh, uh, yeah. Child's Play One, Child's Play Two. 
I, I really do like it. I think Chucky is a ton of fun. And when you get the reveal in the attic when Barb's realizes that like he's peeling away and pulls away this show his scars. Oh. That then establishes that this is meant to be the Chucky doll from the original movies. Yes. So it does leave a bit of a gap that's never really explained. It means that you must have got reassembled after he was axed to pieces at the end of Seed. But yeah. again, but you don't want this film didn't want to have the, that type of baggage. So you just kind of have to roll with it. You gotta roll with it, yeah. But I do like that continuity of the because I love the scarred. Oh, that whole look. attic scene is is yeah. very. I I really really like that. There's, there's so a, you got you another line. And there are two fucking close, close together. together. You have your mother's eyes, and they were always two fucking close together. That, right in the eyeball. One of my favorite scenes, like when Nika sees like a sister's body falling downstairs. It's the, I think this is the only fully CG Chuck Chucky scene yeah. in the series when he's walking down the stairs. Because usually for scenes like this, there are a few scenes where they still use like a stunt double to play him. Mm. But I think for the shot they wanted, it scaling wise, it wasn't going to no. work. And this is obviously they could take full advantage of people in green screen suits with green rods moving them. But going down the stairs, it was just too complicated. So he's, he yeah. was just fully CG for that scene. Yeah. And I, I think you can notice, but it's so quick you kind of don't i don't no. mind considering the majority of the movie is him yeah he's literally in some scenes he's actually a hand puppet to move yeah, his mouth he is in, yeah so i love that they're still oh, he's still a puppet they've always the they've always been very creative in terms of how they use chucky you know like yeah. how they move chucky it's like yeah sometimes it is a puppet sometimes it is cg sometimes they have an actor or an actress in the in the costume and it's a, yeah it's a scaling thing i i really I, I love that you know they, they really really care about it they put a lot of attention into it yeah there's some standout scenes as well we talked about the dinner party and the rat poison who is who's been poisoned it's so uncomfortable we have a decapitation scene oh God, leading on amazing. from the dinner party because unfortunately it's father frank that ate the poison meal he excuses himself from the table because he's not feeling well and we later see him that he's been involved in a car crash, presumably because he's the poison's taken over and he's lost control of the car. And his his head is trapped in the car, and they they try and take like the sheet of metal away, and unfortunately they just end up decapitating the poor guy. It's very much like uh, signs. It is very much With like the, uh, the truck wheel. Yeah, it just God, it reminds me of Scary Movie Three. <laughs> She's splitting off. This is a very bloody movie. This and oh yeah, it's cool. I think again because it's direct to DVD, not theatrical. They could get away with just making it as bloody as they want. Yeah, but that effect is awesome. It's a, it is absolutely incredible. So good. It's like a little bit. Bob's eye goes down the stairs, boing, bounce, boing, boing. and then we know from behind the scenes that they were just bound they just yeah. threw it down the stairs. Yeah, and it just it works, and then there's a great stunt of the body coming oh, down. Totally. And then there's also more like suspenseful scenes too. Like there's a scene involving Nika holding the Chucky doll. She doesn't realize at this point that the, the, the doll is alive. Like she's a bit bit suspicious. Like the doll seems to be moving around in around the house, but she's in the elevator and they get stuck in the elevator, don't they? Yeah. And then all power the, keeps going out. And it's yeah, it's dark, so we can't see what's really going on, but we hear the knife. We hear the knife being pulled out. But nothing happens. And then it's only a few minutes later we realise her leg is bleeding. Yeah. Obviously, she, she's she got no sensation in her legs. But Chucky, the little bastard in the elevator, has taken the knife to her leg. Probably to test out a theory. I, th I to... think it's to make, again, see the souls of doubt in the family that she can look after herself. Yes. This is see what... where Chucky pushes her over the banister. Oh. An amazing stunt. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, the Nika and Chucky showdown is great. We get some really great dialogue between them as well in that yeah. scene. Well, she accuses him of having completion anxiety. <laughs> and then what does he say? He's such a little shit. He's like, you're the last one standing, as a, so to speak. And now you're the last one standing, so to speak. Chucky, he is great. Uh, he has so he, He's Chucky, isn't he? He's going to yeah. have his good lines. It's just, Yeah. The, the other thing that really stands out to me, just chatting about like how it kind this one sort of alters... Charles Lee Ray's backstory a bit is they do put a lot of emphasis on his obsession with families, mm -hmm. families in general, because obviously we, we learn he somehow ingratiated himself into the, the Pierce family. He became obsessed with, with Sarah and the idea of having like a family with her being a father to this baby that's not his. Um, but he also says something like when he's having that showdown with Nika, he's like, 
you know, over the years, there's been a lot of families, and yours was always my favorite. The Barclays. The Barclays, Kincaids. the Kincaids. 25 years. Since then, a lot of families have come and gone. The Barclays, the Kincaids, the Tillies. But Nika, your family was always my favorite. And yeah, it's like, obviously as he's been a doll, so it's kind of, of course he's gonna be, you know, taken to different families and, and whatnot. It kind of makes sense, but it does, this movie puts a different spin on it in that he's directly, actively like targeted families because yeah. he wants to be a part of one in some way. Weird, yeah. It, they... It's weird how it kind of skews that a little bit. And they take, I think they take this, those themes especially into the TV series. Yeah. Because I think that shows that he targets, it targets a lot of families because he was an orphan. He was an orphan. That's something we learn, yeah, in, we learn. in the show. I think this is the first film where we see that he's from a place called Hackensack. Yes. Yes, I think that's true. Yeah. So how has Chucky been, how was he delivered? Oh. So we get the, re the reappearance of Jennifer Tilly as Tiffany Valentine possessing the body of Jennifer <laughs> Tilly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and she's, she's been posting him around. So obviously at some point between Seed and Curse, they've made up. She's reassembled him. Yeah. Because <laughs> we saw that yeah. she was not, they, were, they were not on speaking terms. They were not on speaking terms. They're not well. They're not and well. And we see she... So everyone ends up dead pretty much apart from Nika and Alice. Yes. And Alice goes down for it. This is something I really like as well between these two films Nika. is showing... Hmm? Nika. What I call Alice, you said Alice goes down so, for it. Nika goes, sorry, Nika <laughs> goes down for it because, eh, let's be fair, it looks like she's slaughtered a family. Yeah, she's found holding a bloody knife. It's not like you know? Andy, who's surrounded by a lot of dead bodies, like, well, he's a child. Yeah. This is a fully grown woman. Yes, yes. Where a lot of death has happened very quickly. She's found holding, it's, it's covered in blood, yeah. with wounds, with a knife, yeah. blaming a doll. Of course How she's got, look? we see a trial. I really like that finally actually seeing consequences for things that happen within the movie. Yeah. We see Tiffany ships Chucky off to his next victim, which is Alice, who is staying at her grandparents. Mm. I think it is a, grand a grandma's. I think so, yeah. So it must be, obviously, a robot grandma on her dad's side. Maybe, yeah. The first time, Chucky wins. Yeah. He is transferring his soul into Alice. He wants to play hide the soul. Hide the soul. Hide the soul. And I remember when we were watching, you said, well, doesn't that contradict what he says in Seed, where he's like, I'm Chucky the Killer Doll, and I dig it. Yeah. Hide the soul. And guess what? You're it. Why do I always have to be it? Because you're somebody that no one would ever suspect. It, it To me, it just kind of does, just because in Seed, obviously, we get that revelation of... From now on, he's going to relish in being the doll. Like, no more hide the soul. Well, my counter to that was... The first time I watched it... first two times, at least, I watched it, I had no idea there was a post-credit scene. Mm. And the post-credit scene shows Chucky being delivered to another house. And we have the return of Alex Vincent as Andy Barkley, all yeah. grown up. Yeah. Chucky cuts his way out of the box, which I love. It's very much like if anyone's seen Small Soldiers, the way the Commander Elites punch themselves <laughs> out the box... Like, how have we never seen Chucky, like, unpackage himself? Yeah, I know. I really, really like that. And obviously Andy's clocked what the box he is knows. straight away, and he's he been knows. waiting with a shotgun, yeah. and just blows him away, and that's how it ends. Play with this. Andy! But if you look at the doll, it's the same doll that we've been following this entire movie. Yeah. So, how is Chucky there if we've just seen him playing play the soul, uh, yeah. hide the soul. Yeah. It leads us into cult. cult in cult of Chuck, the cult of Chucky, Mancini finally got to do what he'd wanted to do all the way back in Child's Play 3. Multiple Chuckies. And that ending, I think, was the hint. He wasn't transferring his soul into Alice. He was splitting his soul. Yeah. Which he then... Because Tiffany says something like, after she posts him, says, oh, there's one other thing. So I think he was meant to have a forwarding address to somewhere else after. Yeah. So I think Chucky, as Alice, yeah. posted him off to Andy afterwards. Quite possibly. And that's how that would work, because in Cult we do have multiple Chucky's, and he establishes that, yeah, you found him on voodoofordummies.com. Yeah. <laughs> he's moved on from a book to a website now. He's found a way to split his soul. Yeah. In Cult of Chucky, 
Nika is in a mental institute. Yeah. It's like there was a four-year gap between Curse and Cult, and I think that timeline is true for the movies as well. It's, it's yeah. four years on as well. We're used to gaps in the Chucky franchise by yes. now. And that's a consequence from the previous one. And I really think uh, Fiona Dorov gets time oh. to shine in this one. It's like... Yeah, always loved her. But um, I'm more used to seeing Nika as, like, either in the persona of Chucky or as, like, you know, poor, demented Nika, which is not something that we see in Curse. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a bit unusual. I remember, I think I pointed out this time around, it's like, I really like her hair in this one. Oh, yeah, it's gorgeous. Oh, it's like, She's had a cut and it's just kind of wild and curly. And, and this, she really suits by me. the time this comes out, we're filming this in October. Like, it's 20 degrees in October in the UK. What, what's it's, going on? We're having a freak heat wave. It's yeah, weird. that's why I'm in... Comfy pants. Yeah. So, by the time this video comes out in November, we might have met Brad and Fiona Dorif. We've got tickets to meet them at a convention. Yeah, we do. So, if I have, there'll be an image. If, yeah. if, it, if the timeline lines up, there'll be an image there. I really think she gets a chance to shine this one. Also, Brad does, because... That's right, Brad Dorif is retired. He Voice and Chucky is all he does now. Yeah. And all the different Chucky dolls have slightly different voices. The, the ones who are younger have a slightly more high-pitched voice mm. than the... Harder. Yeah. <laughs> so in this one, we have Andy's story as well. Yeah. Who is trying, he's, you know, he's trying to have a normal life. Uh, he seems to be pretty well off. And from what we understand, it's because he got uh, insurance money from what happened with the doll in yeah. the first few films. You can't read, like, as soon as anyone, re any girl researches him, they're kind of like, cautious of him. Yeah. But he still has the Chucky head. He does. So the OG Chucky. Yeah. That he kind of tortures. Tortures, but also is like, weirdly like not friendly with but the, you kind of realize that the head is his only company yeah i would say cult. i prefer curse over cult but this film has a visual aesthetic that stands out from all the other ones like the really asylum like is such cult. a unique building like there's lots of like vi weird to say vibrant grays and whites so that mm. when there's blood it contrasts really nice and you've got a really interesting what? cast of characters all oh very one flew over the cuckoo's nest which obviously brad durer starred in when he was younger uh, yes, and there's a little inside joke as well. One of the lines. Yeah, <laughs> all to meets... do with gum. I think. Well, it's like when he sees one of the um, oh, what's she called? Angela, who is Angela is a schizophrenic who thinks that she's dead, and she's obsessed with the idea that people can see her as a ghost. <laughs> so she encounters Chucky, and he's he's like, oh my god, like I can't deal with all these you know, fucking people. And as he as he wanders off, he's just like fucking cuckoo's nest. I am a vintage, mass-marketed children's toy from the 80s. Standing right in front of you, holding a very sharp scalpel. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Jesus. Fucking cuckoo's nest. Nika and multiple Michael? Is that his name? Malcolm. M multiple Malcolm. Yeah, he has D.I.D. Yeah, yeah, they... It's something to do with a stick of gum, which is a... What a... Uh, the chief gets given in oh, Cuckoo's Nest. Nest. So, so there's loads of uh, parallels with that film. Yeah. Again, I really like this one because that idea of once you're in an asylum and they say, oh, you have a mental illness, anything you say, no matter, especially when it's something crazy, is they think it's just because of that. So but obviously yeah. no one is going to believe Nico about a talking doll. But the interesting thing is at the beginning of the movie, she's come to believe that herself. Yeah. She now is... is she believes that she did just have a mental break, that she did actually kill her family, and she doesn't think that the doll is dangerous. Yeah. She thinks, she believes she did just snap. Again, this is interesting. So she has therapy sessions. She's been moved from a high, from a high spirit one into a medium spirit one. So her therapy sessions are run by Dr. Foley, played by Michael Ferrio. Terrio. Terrio. What's interesting is he ends up playing a different role in the TV series. He does, yeah. And it's the same in this, I think, uh, one of the security guards... Oh, policeman from the end of Curse plays Malcolm. a security guard in this one. No, I think he plays Malcolm. Oh, no, yeah, he? you're right. He plays Malcolm. Yeah. So they get Mancini using different yeah. people for different roles. Yeah. And he, Doctor Foley, presents her with a doll, and we find out this again. We find out for the first time that some of the Chucky dolls were actually called Chucky. Yeah, there was like two percent. Two percent were called Chucky. Or something like that. Yeah. Which I find we I find strange. Yeah. <laughs> I'll call it. So he's like, oh, I specifically asked for a Chucky. Yeah. But dolls keep appearing at this yeah. issue. And then one of the inmates that assumes that this is her baby. Well, she, it's so weird. So she's, should we just go through the group therapy people? Yeah, I think that'd be, that'd be easier. So we got, obviously we've, we've got Malcolm, uh, multiple Malcolm. He's got dis, dissociative identity disorder. 
we have Madeline, who we learn killed her son. And she is the one that instantly becomes a bit obsessed with the Chucky doll that's used in the group therapy sessions. She thinks it's her baby and she literally mothers the doll. We also have Claire, who burnt down her, her house, who takes a bit of a dislike to Nika right from the get-go. And yeah, we also have Angela, who is a schizophrenic lady who is convinced that she's dead. I thought a very interesting collection of characters. Very much so. And yeah. so Chucky infiltrates. Yes, <laughs> group therapy. Because... <laughs> Tiffany visits Nika. Yes. She says that she was Alice's guardian. We find out what happened to Alice. Yeah, not good. That Chucky went on a bit of a killing spree. Well, that she, Tiffany tells her that she's dead because little girls are so fragile. Fragile. They're so fragile. Yeah. So we know that the possess, like he did possess, well, transfer his soul into Alice and do a couple of yes. wild things, but she ultimately ended up dying. Yes. Nika is absolutely devastated. Yes. Yeah. But Tiffany presents her with... Oh, fucking Chucky doll. She wanted you to have this. Because <laughs> it turns out that doll was used in Alice's therapy sessions as yeah. well. So uh, she just gives the doll to Nika. It's when, it's when she uses it. Good luck. And obviously is talking to the Chucky doll. So Chucky is now in the... So now we've got asylum. two dolls. Two dolls, but only one of them is... Possessed. Possessed at this point. Yes. Andy, after realising that murders are start happening at this asylum... Yes. And blaming Chucky. Chucky tells her, how did you think I was the only one? Yeah. He also gets a doll, which has a buzz cut. Must so be he the can only one recognise get... it. Yeah, so he can distinguish it from the other dolls. He sends that there for a reason. Yes. So now we have three Chucky dolls. We've got three Ch Chucky dolls all running around the society. They all start looking a bit different. Like, in order to prove that one isn't alive, Dr. Foley melts the fingers yes. of one of them. What was the one who killed her? child what's her name uh madeline madeline ends up killing chucky yeah it's really sad and she's they, like just, just she's doomed to repeat the cycle of forever killing her child yeah and it's it is really sad i think it makes her a really interesting character oh absolutely but they end up having like a funeral for her. yeah chucky he yeah. ends up losing an arm like killing like make to make her look like she kills off by choking on chucky's so all the dolls had names on set so, so they could tell them apart. Yes. Because if they wanted to do this type of scene in like Child's Play 3, it would have been almost impossible. There is a scene where we have three dolls all walking, talking, and yeah. killing. Absolutely would have been impossible to do this. Like storyboarding was extremely important and it was logistically a nightmare. And I think it took a week to do like this one scene. Yeah. So there's Evil Dead, which I think is... Just the, the head, head, just the head. The, you know, kind of like Ash, like Ash's girlfriend yeah. when he takes a head off and puts it yeah. in the vice. Yeah. There's Edwardian, who I think is the one with the stretched fingers. Uh-huh. There's Ragamuffin. Yes. Which I think, it, the one that got better, because his hair's wild, he's missing oh. an arm. <laughs> yeah. And then there's Buzzcut. And that's yes. obviously Andy's, because it's, Anna, it's yes. Anna Buzzcut. I really like how the old stuff. They're never said in the film. That was purely so that they could the, the distinguish... The filmmakers could distinguish them The all. dolls when yeah. they were talking about them. When they do all get talking to each other. I love it. It's great. I came across this groovy new spell on VoodooForDummies.com that changed everything. Now, I can be me. And me. And me. And theoretically, anyone or anything with two legs and a hand for stab. This is when we see Chucky splitting us all and waking them up so he wakes yeah. up the other dolls. Yeah. Uh, there is a... All right, there's always like a weird continuity problem with all the films. That's how long Chucky needs to be in the doll for the doll to start becoming human. Human. Because we see he gets his head taken off in Curse, mm -hmm. which is meant to be a reference to the first film as well, where he gets yeah. his head shot off. And he just puts it back on. Yeah. Ragamuffin obviously loses an, loses an arm. Yeah. And he's kind of fine. It's not bleeding or anything. But buzz cut. And he makes his way to the asylum. Kind of gets himself committed. Yeah. The reason he sent buzz cut there was because he knew that Chucky would wake him up and send him after him. He's hit a gun in him. Yeah. Ultimately, I do feel like Andy could have been removed from the story and he, not really changed. He doesn't really have any interaction with Nika or any of the other characters. It's, it's still very much his own sort of story Yeah. that's kind of going on on the sidelines. And so this doll's been alive for about 10 minutes. Yeah. And he stamps it to death, shoots it, and it's blood guts the whole works. So and I'm like, I think it just... Like, it's a supernaturally possessed doll doing... I, yeah. Because of voodoo. Voodoo stuff. Yeah. Like... You can't get Don't bogged down in the details. It. It's whatever works for the scene. But when they are all woke up and like Nika's like in a straight jacket at this point. Yeah. 
It's so much fun. Oh, it's brilliant. And they, they argue as well over which one of them gets the, the, the kudos for killing um, Andy. You know, which one of them are going to do it. And they all argue over like, well, you know, I've had this done to me. And I've had this done to me. And then Buzzcut is like, right. you what? gave me this fucking haircut. Look at me there. Oh, yeah, sorry. Pat. You're you like, go. You, you, go. you absolutely, you go. <laughs> it's yours. It's go to town. Amazingly done. It's, it's great. It's a, yeah, the first time ever in a movie where we see multiple Chuckies interact with each other and... Oh god, it's it's great. And the, the visuals in this film, like yeah. the visions that Nika uh, Nika has of like a giant Chucky like holding a knife, but then in the in the reflection of the knife, you see Brad Dourif from the original film. Like, yeah, well, it's it just does a lot of really yeah. interesting things. Just, I think, just, uh, yeah, I no, I agree. Like visually, this film is really interesting. The color palette alone is you know so unique. But I also like Chucky's character in this as well like this is this is all around a, a bleak film like the comedy aside because he's coming after nika again and the reason that he's waited four years to appear in her life again is because he's not been able to like now she's in this different institution she's allowed visitors hence why you know they've him and tiffany have waited this long to to send the doll and whatnot um but it's also like the his his end goal with her is also really kind of macabre because after Nika finds out that Alice, her niece, is is dead, Nika tries to kill herself. She slits slits her wrist. Chucky finds her dying and Nika then wakes up the next day and her wrist has been sewn. It's stitched back together. And he leaves her this really like menacing message, doesn't he? In her her blood. Like, not yet. Or something something like that. Like, he's totally fucking with her. And it's so horrible, but it's so chucky yeah, at the same time. It is. It's, he's having so much fun. Yeah. And that's, I love it when Chucky has fun with it. Yes. Also, a, a, a sort of theme, I guess, of horror films set in mental hospitals, mental asylums, is the moral ambiguity of certain doctors. Yes. And that, well, you have like the patients. nurse, Nurse Carlos. Carlos, yeah. Carlos. It's kind of, again, this is in like deleted scenes that he's been selling pictures of Nika. To the press. To the press. Oh, specifically to Perez Hilton. Yeah, I know. It's his website. And they, they did ask him for permission. Okay. Just because I his that. partner has got multiple sclerosis, I believe. So, yeah, I think so. And, you know, he needs they money, need money to pay for, for it. They need money for treatment, yeah. I think they ended up just cutting a lot of that. They time. did. Carlos is part so Dr. Foley is a. King Weirdo. Yeah. He is um, he's obsessed with Nika. It's heavily implied he's been sexually abusing some other female patients in the past. Through hypnosis. Through hypnosis. But he has a particular soft spot for, for Nika. And he's also got a bit of a shoe fetish yeah. as well. And even Chucky is like, doesn't know how to deal with this My guy. My favourite. Like, he ends up like knocking her. Like, I just can't with this guy. Yeah, yeah it's like he's not, he knocks Dr. Foley out like twice. But he's trying to convince Nika while she's in this like fugue state. Fugue state? I think that's the right, right phrase to go for. Right. Like partially like hypnotized. She's trying to get her to kill him, like to make her like him. Yeah. And yeah, the second time he's like, I can't this guy. I don't know if I should kill him. I'll take notes. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And it's again Chucky just having fun with it. I just can't with this guy. I don't know whether to kill him or just take notes. <laughs> Chucky's ultimate goal of this one. Yeah. He does decide to split his soul and possess Nika. Yes. So again, another film where Chucky wins. Yeah. And he ends up stuck in the asylum. Yes. And for some, through some voodoo stuff, Nika can stand while possessed by... Okay, it was, I, I was going to ask... Is that ever explained? It's just supernatural. Supernatural movie shit. Going in, like the end of this movie is important setup for the TV series. Now we know in the TV series we do have a new cast of characters, Mm. but Nika's story is parallel to it. And whenever Nika breaks through, she collapses to the ground. I think it's a good way to distinguish between the two personalities. So when Chucky's in charge, through some yeah, is it supernatural? She's supernaturally possessed at this point. Yeah. What's the rule book here? What is the yeah? That's true. So. Yeah, and she stamps Dr. Foley's head in, in an oh, amazing practical. So that's like, good. There's something really attractive about Fiona Dorf when she's 
acting as Nika possessed by Chucky. Fiona Dorif as as a psycho is something else. Fiona Dorif in Red Wedges is equally something else. Yeah. The thing I also kind of like about that scene as well is before she kills Foley, um, Chucky, like, you know, it, as Nika says, this is for Nika. Yeah. And then he kills Foley. And there's also something to be said maybe about the fact that both times when he knocks Foley out, he does actually, whether intentionally or not, but he in, in that moment is preventing Foley from assaulting Nika. Yeah. It's like of all Chucky's faults, he doesn't do SA. That's not his Apparently not. It's not his thing. He no, likes, apparently not. He likes to stab, he likes to strangle, he likes to possess. But that's not it's not But he draws a hard line. He draws a hard line. <laughs> SA, yeah. Apparently yeah. apparently he does. I do find that quite like an interesting thing. He's like, yeah, this is for Nika. Yeah, and then we see on his head. Tiffany again picking him. Again, I love like the whole Chucky franchise is very quick. Yeah. Like, that's Dominic. He's very. Absolutely. Yeah, he was a very openly gay director and it's all through all the films. But then it's like Chucky is basically in a lesbian relationship at the end. Yeah. He's like, well, this is different. This is different. different. Like, it works for me. It's I can't do the voice. I don't know. I love what, the first thing Chucky does when he's in Nika's body, which I imagine any man who would find himself in the body of a woman would probably do first just... Because it's weird for us. It's like I imagine if you ended up in a body of a man, the first thing you'd be like is, you know, because suddenly you've got something dangling there that's like not freaky. usually there. <laughs> yeah, like Freaky. Like Freaky. Great film. I, I I just find that really funny. Yeah. Also in Scooby-Doo, you know, where they're all like changing bodies in the live action yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> and <French is> like... <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, but we also get to see the Tiffany doll again. Oh, we do. Now, this, So when they all get into the car together... There was apparently meant to be a reference to Glenn and Glenda in this. And I think in the scene you can kind of tell that it was cut. Universal were like hard no on no it. They did not want any seed. reference. And I, I knew something had been cut. I couldn't at the time remember if it was curse or caught. I think it was a rule for curse as well. Mm. Universe, because of the reaction to see it at the time, they wanted absolutely no reference to anything that happened in those movies. Yeah. Which is why like when one thing, when Glenn Glenda is referred to in the first season of the TV show. I remember telling you, like, this is a big deal. It's big. They were not allowed yeah. to reference it. And the fact that, obviously, then appears in the, very heavily in the second series. I was like, yeah. this is... I, I, I really like that. I really like that they managed to readdress it. Because yeah. Universal, it was a hard no. Nothing to do with Seed is to be referenced in these movies. Yeah. It's a big, big Other deal. than Jennifer Tilly being possessed by Tiffany Valentine. That, apparently, that was fine. I know, that was all right. But then you think, like, how different it is by the time you get to season two. And Glenn Glenda, it's like, it's... One of the biggest arcs of that whole... It is. It's probably like one of the most interesting arcs. Absolutely. Like, they took stuff that just didn't work in 2004 and through 2020 lenses. Yes. Managed to make it work. Which is something like, I rewrote think... the character in the right ways. Mancini, it's, it's, it's something that is common, I think, across the Child's Play franchise. Like, things he'll introduce in maybe earlier installments that he didn't have maybe the confidence or the time or like, you know, the wider understanding of like society or funders to really kind of do justice. He always picks up in later installments. And yeah, it's like the, the whole school element of kids dealing with Chucky is something he brings up in Child's Play 3, but it's something he really runs with by the time we get into the first series of um, of Chucky. Especially season TV two. Show, especially season two. And like, obviously... You know, gender identity and all that stuff that's in Seed of Chucky. By the time we get to season two, fuck, it's like we're away. Yeah. <laughs> we're, you know, we're off to the races with this. Yeah, so what, what these two films do, obviously, they are, they have perfectly set the scene yeah. for the TV series. And even though, totally. like, Curse especially, started off as a soft reboot. Yeah. By the end of season two of the show, the different storylines have all converged perfectly, I think. Like, I really like I how they all... So tied together because there's a post credit scene for Colt as well where we see the return of that name has just disappeared from my head his uh, sister from Child's Play 2 oh Kyle Kyle we see the return like at the end of Curse we see the return of Andy at the yeah. end of Colt we see the return of Kyle and yeah. she turns up at Andy's home yeah with the head of Chucky yeah. and she prepares, she just starts torturing it. Oh, yeah. And also, we know she returns in the TV series as well. And I just really, like, so many other films struggle to bring so many different oh. storylines and characters together. Together. Mancini's and, a master at it. Because it was still a couple of years away. It was, what, 2020 when the first series came out? 
I imagine. I think so. Like 2021? Yeah, it was around that so point. So it was still like four or five years after... Oh, several years after Cult came out. So, and the last time we see Nika, supernaturally possessed by Chucky. Yeah, exactly. Like, that was the most exciting thing for me about when the TV series was announced. Oh my God, we're actually going to... And it was announced that it wasn't a remake. It was following on. So we can finally find out what happens there. Yeah. Because Percy, for me... Nika is one of the most tragic characters. Oh my we'll, god. We'll not go into what happens to her in the series. I think, just in case anyone's not seen it, yeah. that's not what this video's about, but my god, that poor girl, that poor woman. I know. She, it, it kind of begs questions as to what what can they do to Nika next? <laughs> like, what's the kindest thing to do to yeah. Nika? But she was such a good addition. And it's also a testament to Mancini as well. It's like, not only is he great at like picking up threads that he's introduced in the past and like running with them, but he's really good at introducing characters that have longevity. You know, it's like some franchises, they try and introduce new characters into the mix and audiences just, you know, they don't take to them. Maybe they're not written well, whatever it is. Introduce Tiffany in, in Bride. People have different opinions on that movie, but everyone adores Tiffany Valentine. Like, what a fucking great character. Same with Nika. You know, like, a bit of a gamble, arguably, to make, you know, have a new character, the focal point of a film, but... Six films in. Six films in, and she's still the star. Yeah. Or one of them. You know, she's great. The TV show, those three kids, it's like, yes, we love them. I would just also like to talk about the kills in Cult. Yeah. Mancini always wanted Chucky to kill someone with some sort of, like, battery-operated power tool. Yes. he got, like, the drill kill through the back of the head. That looks great. So that's Malcolm. That's Malcolm's. That's Malcolm. Um, Madeline's death is probably the most goriest one. This is the goriest movie. It is. Oh, you know, it is. With the... Is it Ragamuffin that's got the one with its arm yeah. off? And he basically t stuffs his arm right down her throat, like, slowly, slowly forces it in until eventually just rams it down, pulls it back out, takes, like, some of her insides out with him and he, I love that moment where he kind of looks at it and he's like marveled at what he's just done like yeah. even he's like oh okay Claire um Claire is strapped to a gurney basically and Chucky like she's she's lying right beneath the kind of see-through glass ceiling um he smashes it and she's impaled by all of the shards of glass one of them takes her head clean off looks great and Angela, he kills by mirroring what um, Nika tried to do. He slits, he slits her wrists as a way to, you know, fuck with, fuck with Nika. All of these characters get well, great deaths. Uh, the nurse, when he gets like killed by all three Chucky's. Oh, Carlos! Yeah, he's just but disemboweled. The, uh, the window one that feels like a callback to uh, Bride. Yeah. Because even as I, sometimes I amaze myself. I amaze myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like they said Chucky just reveling in being Chucky. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes I scare myself. Oh, he's an evil, evil little shit. Yeah. But yeah, he, he wins again. He does, he wins again. And it's great. Like, I really like both of these films. Like, if I was to pick between two, yeah, Curse, I probably prefer. Yeah. I don't know where I am, to be honest with them. All I know is, like, now having rewatched them, it's really kind of skewed my overall ranking of the, of the films. Like, these two, these two are high... Mm. I just don't know how high. I, they I'd are. have to think about Cole, but Curse, I said, it's top three for me. I think it's it goes like Curse, the original movie, then Child's Play two at top. Yeah. With uh, with Bride at fourth, which I feel bad having Bride so far down because I have a ton of fun watching oh, that Bride's movie. Bride's great, but, but when I like all the movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I, I think I'm with you on that. I would really have to think hard about. We probably have to rewatch them again. <laughs> where I am with them all, yeah. But Curse and Cole, great. It was. I I'm happy that. They were were back to horror. Yeah. You know, it's like we had gothic horror with Curse and then just outright, like, body horror almost in, in Cult. And now the franchise is still going today. Yeah. I do think, before we bring this video to a close, season three, at this point, will have just aired its first episode. Because of the strikes, only four episodes were filmed, so they're going to air those episodes and then just wait mm -hmm. until they film it. If anything's going to kill the series, I think it's going to be this, because they... what. If they're really lucky, that fourth episode ends on a cliffhanger. Yeah. But they've obviously not planned to have a seasonal break. And I think that's a, it's a oh, really a risky move yeah. to, to release those four episodes. Yeah. 
the only advantage is they can they can gauge people's reactions to those four episodes and maybe adjust accordingly. Maybe. But if there's anything that could kill the series, but that this this will be it. But my team's always said whenever the series ends, he's just going to make mo- a movie again. Yeah. Because I think there's still interest in making Chucky movies. It's just that question that you know, it is child's play can can and will it outlive Brad Dourif? I- and should it? Um, I'm sure that's something that Mancini obviously has taken into consideration. Yeah, as well, it's something he will have talked about. But yeah, bad. I'm sure. I'm sure, but we'll see. It's still the, the franchise is very much still alive and kicking. So yeah. So you got any more notes? No, I well, don't think so. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Let us know what you think of these two, these two entries. Yes. What's your favorite Chucky design? That's that's what I'm going to go for yeah. for this one. Yeah. Uh, also, what's your favourite kill? I would love to know that. Because yeah. there's a lot of inventive ones across these two films. Yeah, especially. So, yeah, thanks for stopping by, guys. See you next week.